Good morning to you. Today's topic is God's approved worker. God's approved worker. The reading is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8 to 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8 to 15. Let me read. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they, may, they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy. For if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things and charge them before God not to quarrel about words which does no good, but only ruins the hearers. Do you do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. There are many types of workers in God's world. They are pastors, evangelists, priests, bishops, missionaries, mission workers, theological lecturers, lay teachers, social workers, helpers, lay leaders, church staff, administrators, professionals, factory workers, office workers, police, army, government workers, politicians, housewives, general workers. Many types, both in the church and both outside the church, both clergy and lay, and all sorts of people are in God's world. But let us look at Paul's example. In this passage, Paul says that uh, he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ who raised from the dead and the offspring of David, and he suffered and bound with chains as criminal because of the gospel. He endured everything for the sake of the elect. And he's even said, if we die, if we have died with him, Jesus, we also live with him. We, if we endure, we also reign with him. And Paul advised Timothy to say, remind them of all these things. Charge them before God. Do your best to present yourself to God as an approved worker of God. No need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. Generally, the scriptures expect of God's workers, both in the church as outside the church. If so, you are the child of God, the scripture expects that you preach the gospel, verse 8 says it. Verse 9 and verse 12 tells us that be willing to suffer for the gospel's sake. Don't because of some little thing then we you know, shun ourselves away from preaching the gospel. Serve for the sake of God's people, so that they will get salvation. Pastor and teach the people of God, both you are a pastor or you are not a pastor, teach the people of God. Rightly handling the word of truth. The word of God is a word of truth. You have to handle it rightly. Yeah, don't just do your own translation as you wish, but it has to come back to what God wants. Present yourself worthy of God. So that's the scripture's expectation of God's word. But what happened to the workers today? The workers today, they, they do preach the gospel, but then preach the gospel plus something else. Why? We preach the gospel, preach la. Why preach the gospel? plus something else. Sometimes we promote ourselves, sometimes we seek for uh, welfare, 
our attention, and sometimes we ask, look for so many things. Paul says in the scripture, you know, willing to suffer for the gospel's sake. And today we find it hard to suffer for the gospel's sake. People are looking for comfort. And we usually tend to go to all the comfort places, the big cities, the place that has glamour, have light, had name, had a big congregation, all the small outreach churches elsewhere, and all the places uh, that we, we that looks like no comfort, we will not go. A lot of time when I was a bishop and I want to send people to this church, that church, and a lot of questions will come and say, you know, this is not suitable for me, for my wife, for my children, and it's not suitable for the family. You know, either there's no school, no job, and the situation, the environment is not inclusive. So many reasons. Are we looking for God's comfort or looking for the world's comfort? So what happened today to God's worker today? When people serve, so serve for the sake of God's people. Serve for the sake of salvation first. Serve for the sake of bringing them to the glory of God. But a lot of time we serve for the sake of ourselves. So much of self is there. There is no entertainment. There is no uh, shopping arcade, shopping mall. And things are so remote uh, and not up to standard. Not even five stars, not even four stars, not even three stars, not even two stars. Sometimes all the stars, when you go to the Orang Asli place, it is, you look up, it's all the stars. So God, Paul says, you have to pastor and teach the people of God. Not only teaching the people of God, sometimes when we taught, we taught knowledge, not the God's truth. There are a lot of knowledge. Science will give you knowledge. All the world will give you a lot of knowledge. Then, but we teach and we make sure it's not only teaching knowledge, but we must teach God's truth in all these things. Without God's truth, and all that we are doing is just the same as the world, then no need Jesus Christ, because there's no truth of God there. We must rightly handle the word of truth. Rightly handle the word of truth. <laughs> the... the one commentator says that if you want to handle the word of truth rightly, you know, it is like an archer. An archer, you shoot an arrow. You shoot an arrow. You have to practice it, practice it, practice it, practice it until you shoot right to the bullseye. Keep practicing it until you hit the bullseye. But the problem is that you know, after a while, if we lack it and then we didn't practice it, we know how to do it in our minds, but then when we practice it, it doesn't hit the bullseye. You may, maybe we shoot many times, it doesn't. We need to more practice to come back, to get it right. So that is, he says that you have to be right. The right direction, the right energy, the right strength, the right stamina, the right everything. So if we don't do that, the word of truth may be there, but then the word of truth is not right, not rightly handled. We use the word of truth sometimes for our own self-gain. Yes, we go for training, we go for equipping, and there are people who go for training and collect a lot of training notes and buy a lot of books, but we never look at it. And we have a lot of de de development, building up, but all, a lot of time is for self-consumption because I want to know. I want to know, I want to know, I want to know. But hardly is to develop for God's kingdom. If it is developed for God's kingdom, then we employ it for the kingdom of God and allow the knowledge, the word of truth to come. When the, 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 the Bible says, says, if you know the word, you know the truth, the truth will set you free. So the word of truth will set you free. 
will free you. Definitely it will free you. But the word of truth, when it is tainted, or it is not rightly handled, so it cannot, because it doesn't free you. So the word of truth, it's almost like you know how to play the piano, you keep playing the piano, but after a long time, you did not play, and you lax. So you, you know in your mind, you know how to read the notes, you know the sound, you know the music, but when you play, your fingers harden, harden. So find it hard, and you may play, play it, but then it is not up to your expectation. It is right, a little bit right. But if you want to be really, really right, then you practice it and practice it and practice it until it's so good that everybody will clap hand, will, will praise you because it is so good. So we need to practice the word of truth and practice it and keep it in our lives. So that when we say it, it becomes true. And when we live it, it becomes true. So the word of truth is not and rightly handling doesn't mean only preaching, teaching, but it's also into our lives. And our lives need to rightly present the word of truth. When the truth comes, we present it truly to the way of the truth. That is what Paul has done. He preached the gospel. He understood the truth. He preached the gospel. You just imagine those days when Paul was preaching, there was no Bible. There was nothing written. So you ask the people in the early church, what did they learn? They only learned the gospel. They learned the gospel. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. So they learned that Jesus died on the cross, Jesus was raised, and Jesus died for us, and Jesus ascended to heaven. They learned all this truth, and they learned the truth, and they lived their life and followed the way of the truth and the right truth and the holy holiness path to follow that. They they have no books, they have no nothing, and Paul keep writing to them and teaching them. That's why they have a lot of questions and ask Paul, can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? Paul encourage them. Paul tell them and they, they suddenly receive the gifts of the Spirit and they don't know how what it is. So Paul teach them, show them and they begin because the truth is there and the the when the gift comes they operate in truth and truth. So even Jesus says in the, in the last days you should worship God in spirit and in truth. And that will be the truthful things right in from your heart. So it's not for self consumption, it's for the kingdom of God. And we must present ourselves worthy of God. But today a lot of time when we present ourselves for promotion, for self-glory, for self-benefit, and but not to be authentic in God. We need to be authentic in God. Sometimes we overdo and sometimes we underdo. And sometimes we should be doing it and then not doing it. When we should not be doing it and yet be doing it. So we have to be very careful. Some these are the things that really crowd our lives. You know, we we struggle in us. Today, God's worker continue need to struggle, and we must overcome this struggle, struggle of sin and Satan. We, we must overcome it. That struggle is inside. If you don't get rid and get settled down, or the overcome that struggle, it will be a package. And the baggage comes with us when we can move, but draggy, draggy. It's just like a car. A car, you know, suddenly is so nice, and one day the car is just when you press the accelerator, it's not moving. The oil is not coming in. The petrol is not coming in. There's something wrong with the carburetor. So we, we, you, you just can't move. And you press and press, and the car is not, not moving. Then you know the car needs servicing. So we too need servicing by adjusting it correctly and have the right amount of petrol to come out, right amount of energy, right amount of everything must be right amount. So 
today, today's worker, we just keep running and running and running and forgot. Even then we are in the professional line in the world, we keep running and running and we forgot that we need servicing. Servicing has to come back to God and check back every part of it in our lives. Every part. You know, not, not only that we can overcome sin and overcome Satan, there are also the other things that they are inside us. There are resentment, hatred. There is a lot of in, in, inner things that we have not given up. We have not overcome. And those things bug us. And those things disturb us. Once in a while, it comes up again. Yeah? We have not learned to really willingly offer and serve God. And when we are not willingly, then there's sometimes there's blockages. How come certain things that I do, and that the other person did, and can work on it, and I do, somehow it didn't work, it didn't come out, is because there are blockages and messages behind and that we need to overcome. And sometimes we also have insecurity. Then we ask why insecurity? Fear and because we uh, no hope, despair, all sorts of these things need to come back to God. And because when we preach not the true gospel, we preach so many things and it may be good. But then, we underline where is the gospel that we are preaching. When we say our lives, yes, lifestyle, evangelism, then you look at it, which part of your life really present the gospel or shining the gospel, or living the gospel out. When you talk about the gospel, it's Jesus Christ. Then you say, will Jesus do this? When you talk about the gospel, it is Christ died on the cross. So can we follow him to die to ourselves and when we look at the gospel we say the gospel is to save people is for people are we for people or for ourselves so sometimes it is not comfort is no good it is but when we replace comfort with the gospel with comfort and sometimes service is not service bad you know it's just replace the service instead of serving god and his people we serve only ourselves. So much so that we, we tell people, no one can touch me and I serve. And sometimes we are serving is using our experience. We thought using our experience to serve, but it's not the relying on God. And sometimes we are using our knowledge, our maturity. I thought the knowledge, the more knowledge of the Bible, the more knowledge is maturity. But where is the faith? We use knowledge to academize faith. Knowledge to replace faith. No wonder a lot of things we don't trust God. We don't need to ask God. We need to, we to depend on God. If we pray, it doesn't work. Oh, it's God's will. It doesn't work. But where is our faith coming in? So the same thing is when we teach you know, the people through word and do we teach it to ourselves in the life? Be really an accountable person to God, be a person worthy of God, be a person approved of God, a worker approved of God. So you are a worker of God in the church, you should be the worker of God at home, you should work of God in the professional world, you know, worker of God in the factory, the worker of God in the office, worker of God in the supermarket, everywhere. Are you God's worker? Approve God's worker that people can see it in your life, they present it up. So today, God's approved worker, where are you? How many? Are you one of them? Can you be one of them? Shall you be one of them? Let's pray. Come Lord Jesus, come Holy Spirit, speak to us, remind us, of our lives. Remind us that we are called by God to be His worker wherever we are. In the church, outside the church, in the home, outside the home, in the office, outside the office, in the leisure time, outside leisure time. Lord, speak to us, lead us, that we will walk that journey with you so close and we present the gospel of Christ and that our lives will live and 
correct, rightly handling the word of truth, that the truth will set us free and set others free. And let us serve with willing heart to serve with God. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless all of you.